People who've delved into the universe around Batman tend to ask the question, why doesn't Batman just kill the villains? And this makes sense, you'd think, logically, since they keep breaking out and murdering people over and over and over, that Bruce Wayne would have the common decency to end the cycle and just kill the Joker along with the rest of the inmates at Arkham. But the answer to why goes beyond any stream of logic. It goes into the philosophy of how one writes Batman. It's more than just the meta reasoning of, oh, then they can't use the villains and the stories would be boring. And it goes beyond banal in-universe reasoning as, well, Gotham doesn't have the death penalty, so they can't kill them. The reason lies behind the motivations of Batman. The reason is built upon a foundation of what it means to be a quote-unquote true hero, and how incredibly complex being a true hero really is when you try to interpret it in a grim world such as Gotham City. The reason is because if they decided to kill, then it would destroy literally everything that Batman works toward, both in his quest to stop crime and in his quest of self-healing. Now, most people aren't aware of Batman's obsession with self-healing because it's rarely directly stated when reading the comics. Batman has this fear that he knows he's just like his villains. He's just as mentally ill as his villains, and he needs to believe that they can be fixed. Because if they can't be fixed, then there's no hope for him. It's often explored how, during the night in Crime Alley when his parents were killed, that was a moment that Bruce Wayne could have become just as corrupt as the people he fights. And though he managed not to be as corrupt as them, he's still just as hurt as them. Which is what makes Batman and the Joker such interesting characters, because they're parallel of one another at pivotal points in time. Bruce Wayne simply learned to channel his torment into a different path, but it's still very near to how the villains channel their torment. The best part is that Bruce Wayne understands this, and that's why he focuses so heavily on donating to psychiatric research in Arkham Asylum, because he desperately hopes that some breakthrough cure will be found for the villains. Because if they can cure the villains, then they can cure him. The only problem is that Batman can't let himself be cured, because then he wouldn't be Batman, as was shown in Tom King's story during the City of Bane, where Catwoman refused to marry Batman, because happiness simply isn't an option. So that creates a problem for the writers. If Batman wants to be cured, but also can't be cured, because then he wouldn't be Batman, why else wouldn't he kill the villains? That leads into the idea of larger world healing. They know that taking a dictatorial role in killing everyone with their own set of morals won't fix everything in the long run. The system needs to be fixed. The economy needs to be fixed. The people need to be fixed. That's where the core of the problem is, and a good example of this is in the dark multiverse death of Superman, where Lois Lane becomes an emotionally scarred version of Superman and goes on a killing spree. By killing all the villains, it becomes the same as using liposuction to get a sexier body. It doesn't fix the core of the issue. For liposuction, the core of the issue is unhealthy eating habits. For Lois Lane, the core of the issue is that the socio-economical state of the world is creating these villains. Whether it be their lack of opportunities, others bullying them, or them feeling like they have to become villains just to have a defense against the crazy world they live in. Killing all the villains doesn't fix the world. The villains are just symptoms. The issue for the writers when tackling this is that it's a good excuse. These stories are character-focused, and using this philosophy isn't a character-focused reasoning. It's a worldly reasoning. So when this reasoning doesn't fit the narrative, you have to look introspectively once again and marry the two reasonings. For example, Batman and Superman agree on one thing. We would never give in to the devil on our shoulder and hurt our enemies the way they hurt us. If we act like them, we become them. In the same issue, Batman states, 
The thing that always scared me was this. If heroes ever started to act like our enemies, we'd be better villains than they ever were. There's a fear. The fear of what could happen. And they know that this is one of those instances where it's best not to have the heroes confront their fears because if they fail, then they put innocent lives at risk. In the very next issue, you see the Shazam who laughs turn into Billy Batson to appeal to Superman's merciful side, only to use it against him. So you get another reasoning as to why the heroes don't kill. They're too afraid to. They work so hard to keep themselves as heroes that when they decide to do what the villains do, they may lose their moral compass and devolve into becoming villains themselves. It's a sadly known truth that killing is one of those things that gets easier the more you do it. And keeping that distance from killing, not going over the edge, making it taboo, is purely for the sake of not shifting into an anti-hero mentality. However, it will be argued that the Batman Who Laughs, a Batman from an alternate universe that was exposed to Joker toxin and became a murderous apex predator, shows our Batman all the alternate universes where he succeeds in his quest against stopping all crime. Where our Batman actually manages to win his war on crime and create a better world. One of those was through political means and breakthroughs in psychiatry. In that universe, Bruce Wayne had to give up being Batman. And in another, Bruce Wayne decides to kill as much as he can and eventually becomes a dictator of Gotham, and by becoming an extremist version of Batman. But then again, according to Multiverse Theory, there's a universe where Batman is made of cotton candy and likes to snowboard on the weekends. So when the argument is literally taking away the person we're talking about, that being our Batman, and substituting it with a completely other person from another universe, that doesn't really work because then we're, we, are, we aren't talking about the same thing anymore. Why does our Batman refuse to kill? He still pursues funding studies in psychiatry, so it's not as if he's abandoned that possibility, but he knows that if he becomes an extremist, I mean, at that point he becomes the villain. Now, you can take all of these and just wave them away as excuses. You could argue that in the real world, these wouldn't hold any water. And you're right. But then again, we don't have people in tights punching bad guys on city streets. Of course these reasonings wouldn't work. And that's the biggest issue when comic fans pretend they're being smart by saying that Batman should kill. It's those people who don't understand that all the reasoning behind why Batman doesn't kill is created so that these heroes can exist in their worlds. If we take Batman out of the comics and put it into the real world, then of course he should kill these villains. But in the real world, we don't have to worry about his character development, or his motivation, or his backstory, or his mentality behind his actions, or the slew of other stepping stones that create a good character. The argument that Batman should kill doesn't hold any water because the people who think Batman should kill are either not talking about Batman in his world and creating an argument that they can win, or they simply don't understand what it means to tell a good story. That's everything I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have a Patreon if you want to see my videos in advance, or if you want to support the channel in another way, I have t-shirts that are linked in the description below. Stay beautiful and keep playing.